Just one look and... It gives me the chills. I just can't imagine what went inside of that house. Everardo Miranda, who lives a couple doors down from Timothy Halslett, filmed the moments Haslett was taken into custody. I could have never imagined that happened here in Excelsior Springs. In the exclusive video to Channel 9, Miranda thought Haslett was being arrested after calling police because of complaints about the dog. Oh man, you know, I felt bad because they took him to jail for the dog, you know? And uh, I go to sleep and I wake up to find out this crazy thing happened just right next door to us. Miranda says he rarely saw Haslett only to let the dog in and outside and never saw the woman who ran for help. What that woman went through, you know? My heart breaks for her. Hopefully he rots in jail. He should not see sunlight ever again. Hopefully things get better around here. And I'm trusting the police officers around here to, you know, keep us secure. Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzela Kay, and today we continue to look at the case, the kidnapping case that happened in Excelsior Springs, Missouri, this past month. On October 7th, 2022, a woman was seen running from a residence um, in Excelsior Springs, banging on doors, begging for help. One neighbor called 911, another let her in and gave her a blanket and food. We're going to hear from that lady's granddaughter as well in her latest interview. And we're going to look at the latest documents. What has unfolded is horrendous to think now they've also fenced off the entire house, boarded up the windows and are still extracting evidence from the house. This victim said that she was kidnapped in September and that she'd been there this entire time. Um, trigger warning for when we do read the documents because it does get pretty intense and I hope it's not upsetting for some of you or triggering as I say. We will look at those um, carefully, slowly go through the documents, see what we can learn. I'm going to show you this clip over here from KMBC9 News as well and this victim said my friends didn't make it, he killed my friends. She'd also told um, the, the lady that was going to call 911, that do, don't, if you, she's like, don't worry, I'll call 911. She said, if you call them and he comes back and catches us, he'll kill us both. So Timothy Haslett Jr. sounds like a very dangerous man. Of course, the speculation that's out there is that he could be a serial killer based on the blue barrels and bags of evidence and things like that, that they were taking out of the house, the cadaver dog that they had out there. But the police are still saying there's no evidence indicating that there were any other victims. So we are still waiting to find out what the forensic tests will reveal. I just do think it's quite a sinister sounding case if they fenced off the whole house, bought it out the windows and covered it in police line do not cross crime scene tape. So let's have a look at this clip. Let's have a look at the documents and the latest interview from Ciara Tharp and... I will keep you posted on this case. Mostly when I share the documents, you'll see I've uh, blanked out the victim's initials, even though they only shared initials. And I really hope that whoever else finds these documents will do the same because the last thing we want is for internet sleuths, as we know this can happen, we see it in every case, to see those initials, to find the person and then to go and stick a camera in their face. That's literally the last thing she needs right now. She needs time and space, lots of it. And it's got to do with her consent if she wants to tell her story you know please don't bug her if you know who this victim is please don't bug her okay so um let's make sure that we give her time and space to heal let's make sure we keep an eye on what's happening in the court and the charges that timothy Haslett jr is facing and how that goes and on the evidence that law enforcement will eventually come forward and tell us that they have so that we know are we dealing with a gacy or an Ariel Castro, because this case feels like Dahmer and Gacy and Castro combined. That's the vibe I'm getting. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but let's for now have a look at this clip right here. Today, boards went up on the windows and a fence with crime scene tape went up around this house here in Excelsior Springs. The neighborhood still in shock at what happened. My heart is still broken. Lisa Johnson remembers Friday morning at a woman escaping from this house just up the street. She's going to be traumatized for the rest of her life. Johnson said the woman came to her door just before 8 a.m. hunched over with a collar around her neck and marks around her wrists and ankles. And I told her I'm going to call help for you. 
her first response was, if you call the cops, he's going to kill both of us. This literally hit close to home. Just a few doors down, Sierra Tharp's grandmother took the woman in as they waited for police. And I hope she can get the help and get the healing she needs. The same goes for others near this house with so many questions. I just want to know she's getting the help that she needs. Everything else eventually will be told. Police say there are more details to come out in this case. We're expecting more from court documents in the coming days. Okay, I've made myself small over here so that we can look at the document together. I'll be reading it to you. Complaint and request for a warrant. Of course, this was against Timothy Marion Haslett Jr. His second name is Marion. Okay, this was October 7th, 2022. Uh, they say complaint and request for a warrant. The prosecuting attorney of the County of Clay, State of Missouri, upon information and belief charges that the defendant count one was a offense of SA in the first degree and this charge if we look at that the range of punishment for the unclassified felony of first degree SA is imprisonment in the custody of the Missouri Department of Corrections for life or for a term of years not less than five years so we're looking now at just the charges he's facing already now without knowing yet what else was in the house that could mean that he'll be in there forever count two is a class b felony of kidnapping in the first degree they say an individual convicted and sentenced for this offense shall not be eligible for parole until 85 percent of the sentence is served and the range of punishment for a class b felony is imprisonment in the custody of the missouri department of corrections for a term of years not less than five years and not to exceed 15. so that's already at least 10 years that he's looking at in prison i hope he'll never be let out then they say 10 7 2022 Judge Lewis uh, Angles issued a search warrant for the interior of the house upon entering the residence to clear it. Excelsior Springs police officers observed a room in the basement consistent with what the victim had described. I believe Timothy Marion Hessler Jr. will not appear upon a summons. How do they know this? Because he currently has three active warrants for failure to appear out of Clay County, Missouri, Cooper County, Missouri, and Liberty, Missouri. I believe Timothy Marion Haslett Jr. poses a danger to a crime victim, the community, or another person. Haslett is accused of kidnapping, SA, and armed criminal action. He has numerous firearms in his residence. Now that is a very interesting looking signature, not? Just look at that sergeant's signature. Very interesting. Okay, let's have a look at the next page. Okay, so this is where the trigger warnings come in. They say Detective Sergeant Brian K. Kennedy. Okay, I have probable cause to believe that on 10-7-2022 at this house in Excelsior Springs, Clay County, Missouri, Timothy Marion Hassler Jr., white male, committed one or more of the following criminal offenses. Kidnapping first degree, SA first degree, armed criminal action, the facts upon uh, or the facts supporting this belief are as follows on 10 7 2022 at about 747 hours excelsior springs officers were dispatched to on the report of a female who showed up at the front door wearing a trash bag metal collar with a padlock and duct tape around her neck the party advised the caller that she had been held hostage at a nearby residence since september those other missing persons cases we looked at also went missing in September. So that is interesting to consider if there are any other victims. I hope not. Upon the officer's arrival at the residence, they found, okay, she was wearing latex lingerie and had a metal collar around her neck with a padlock and duct tape around her neck and advised um, that a man by the name of Timothy picked her up on prospect in Kansas City at the beginning of September 2022. Ariel Castro would also do that, offer rides to people, and you know who else would do that? John Wayne Gacy. She advised Timothy had kept her in a small room in the basement that he had built. He kept her restrained in handcuffs on her wrists and ankles. She was able to get free when he left to take his child to school. Excelsior Springs EMS removed the lock from the collar as it was restricting her breathing. She was transported to the Excelsior Springs Hospital by ambulance. And then they say they rode in the ambulance and she advised that she could point out the residence if the ambulance could drive by. 
As the ambulance drove by, which must have been really scary for her as well, she indicated that it was the residence where she was held as a hostage. She further advised that Timothy had whipped her while she was restrained. There were injuries on her back that were consistent with this description. She advised that Timothy had essayed her multiple times and frequently while she, while she was held as a hostage. A records check of showed the resident was Timothy Hazlitt. Officers set up at the residence waiting for Hazlitt to arrive at about 8.41 hours. So she escaped around 7.47, probably around 7.45-ish, you know, then she was running around. So less than an hour later, he came back. So that was at about 8.41 hours. Hazlitt arrived in a gray Dodge Ram pickup. They've got the whole VIN number, Missouri license plate number. Officers conducted a felony traffic stop of the vehicle. It took Hazlitt into custody on an unrelated animal control violation. They say he committed the Class D felony of SA in the second degree, punishable upon conviction under those sections between September 1st and 7th. Okay, cause physical injury too by means of a dangerous instrument by striking them with a whip. The range of punishment for a Class D felony is imprisonment in the custody of Missouri Department of Corrections for a term of years not to exceed seven years or by imprisonment for a special term not to exceed one year in the county jail or other authorized penal institution or by a fine not to exceed $10,000 or by by both imprisonment and a fine. If money or property has been gained through the commission of the crime, any fine imposed may not more than double the amount of the offender's gain from the commission of the crime. All right. So that's what we have so far. Let's also just verify this with the latest from the Excelsior Citizen News. Hey everyone, uh, it's Jason Cole. Uh, with the Excelsior Citizen here, I just got done. I was at the arraignment for Timothy Haslett Jr. Um, and so basically they were uh, setting forth the charges that were brought against him and um, giving the uh, amount of time that he could possibly serve for those charges. Uh, in the first count, uh, which I believe is the, the rape, uh, it is a sentence of no less than five years up to life in prison. Um, on the second count, I'm sorry, my notes, I had to take notes really quickly. There's no recording devices allowed in the courtroom. Uh, on the second count, which I'll update later, uh, it's a sentence of five to 15 years. On the third count, uh, physical abuse, where he was apparently whipping uh, the person uh, up to seven to 10 years, it says. So in the case, he did ask for a public defender. Um, and so did not have an attorney. Um, he will then have uh, a bond hearing on October 18th at 1.30. Uh, he'll have a preliminary hearing on December 2nd at 9 a.m. Uh, he appeared uh, via video call in the courtroom, uh, dressed in striped, uh, like jailbird clothing, where he comes in, had his hands behind his back, uh, didn't seem very upset or anything like that, just kind of stone face uh, in, in his uh, appearance. They did bring up a previous uh, a case against him where they talked about a careless, a careless and imprudent driving uh, incident that he had been involved in. Um, they ended up waving. Uh, well, he, he pled guilty to that and the judge gave, gave him a three day sentence, uh, which time served, I guess, uh, based on his over the weekend stay. Um, and so he, at, at the very end, he asked the judge if he could have the bail money back from, uh, his previous, um, charges. And he said he wanted to uh, use that as a fund to help his, his family. So, uh, an interesting thing, I'm going to be doing a full write up on this. Uh, we now have the uh, probable cause statement and the... Uh, charges um, that were brought against him. So we'll be sharing those on ExcelsiorCitizen.com uh, later this evening or this afternoon. So. Investigators swarmed this area of Old Orchard Avenue last week and 
Following the release of the search warrant request, we now know that they were seeking and collecting ropes and bondage gear, adult toys, whips, and a small safe belonging to Hazlitt Jr. Let's look at the latest interview. This is also on the Excelsior Citizen. I have linked it in the description box. All the sources are there. So this is Ciara Tharp, as you can see, the rescuer's granddaughter. So let's have a listen to what she's got to say. Um, my name is Sierra Tharp. Um, I've lived here all my life. I'm 38 years old. And um, I was the house where that lady luckily came to my door and was brought in. Just tell us, was it like any other regular morning? Yeah, actually I was starting a new job. Okay. At our bus barn. I was being a monitor for our early childhood center. Oh wow. And I was on the bus and my grandma called me and I'm like, that's, it's gotta be an emergency. She's like, I'll talk to you when you get home. And she's like, the police are gone. Well, when I got home, I walked in the door and I'm like, no, they're up the road. And I'm thinking, what the heck? There's mm -hmm. tons of cops everywhere. Mm -hmm. And she just looked at me and she said, that's where the girl said she was raped. And I'm like, what? I was like, what girl? And I'm thinking a neighbor. Yeah. Okay. And she told me, she said that she was sitting there and a lady come banging on the door and she heard screaming. And she opened the door and the lady said, you gotta help me. She said, I've been raped. I've been held captive. She's like, you gotta help me. He's, he's gonna kill me. Wow. And she, she took a minute because she has, you know, an almost two year old in, in the house. Yeah. And then she said, my heart told me that I needed to help. Wow. She's wow. seen the state she was in and she brought her in. She sat her down on my couch and wrapped her in a blanket I had on my couch mm -hmm. and grabbed food and water. She, she, she was weak and she had a metal dog collar around her neck mm -hmm. and duct tape, which we're kind of guessing that her, was around her mouth mm -hmm. that she had maybe pulled down. My grandma said she had ligature marks on her wrists. The way you described like this, my, like that. my grandma said it was a metal collar and the way she described it was like a bad, <laughs> she called it a bad dog collar. She, she said- restricting your breathing? Yeah, it was restricting her breathing. She said that they couldn't cut it with scissors or anything, whatever it was made out of. And she said that they did cut it some and they were able to loosen it so she could breathe, but that they had left it there. And of course she said the duct tape was around her neck. Yeah. She flung that door open, she let that dog out and she just ran. And a lot of people, you know, are questioning, well, why did she go to her neighbor's house? And I think, you walk out his door, you see my street. So I think she just, you know, yeah. panic mode, I need to get out of here. And to me, going down that hill, you can still see that house, but you're kind of shel sheltered, mm -hmm. you know, like shielded to yeah. where I think she ran. And then she's like, I need help. Yeah. And my grandma said she was clothed. She okay. had some like short shorts on mm -hmm. and she, she said she didn't have much on but she did have some clothes on okay but she's like that was the le last thing i was even thinking about of what she had on yeah, yeah. and yeah. she just she could tell she's real weak and mm -hmm. real hungry your grandmother really did a heroic thing yeah and actually she apologized she said i'm sorry i brought the police to your house and i said no i said you did the right thing i said that's what i would have done i said y if you would have told her no her telling him no that that was a few minutes he could have been there and grabbed her and so she was trying to find somewhere because she knew he'd be back. And then the police came in and she was talking about how gentle the police were. Like she was like, they were so like, they handled it so great. And she said that she did say, she made the comment that my friends didn't make it out. He killed my friends. They didn't make, make it out. Did she give any um, indication as to how many of her friends? No. No, she just said friends. Yeah, plural. she just kept saying that because she, she's worried about her friends. She said, she, she told them exactly his, his name. She knew the exact name, the exact house. Mm -hmm. But she told me, she said, that girl knew her facts. She, she told them everything she could. She's like, and that story never changed. So she had said that she had been there since, since yeah. September? Yeah, she said she had been there since September. Was that early September? She didn't, I don't think she really said. Okay. Anything else that you can think of that your grandmother told you maybe that hasn't been said or should be? No, I don't think so. I know one thing that's going around is of sex trafficking and it really doesn't sound like sex trafficking. Okay. It was, she's kind of under the impression and the way she described it to me, it sounded like that she probably knew him. I know the news said no, mm -hmm, but. Mm -hmm. so you, you had said that, um, that you had spoken with him in the past. You've had some yes. interaction with him yeah. that hasn't gone well. Can you maybe uh, Yeah, I, I had went up, I was, I don't remember if I was chasing my dog. I have a Husky that likes to run, but uh, <laughs> I was up there either chasing my dog or I was walking one of my dogs. Mm -hmm. And this little puppy, Pitbull, I think it was a Pitbull, come running over. And most people, you know, especially here in town, you know, I helped him. 
being a dog mom that chases her dog, <laughs> yeah. I tried helping and there wasn't a thank you. He was very cold and very kind of rude mm -hmm. and everything. And that was the only time I've talked to him. But like I've only seen him a few times outside and the last time I seen him was a couple months ago and he's outside his truck, emergency flashers going and just his, his actions were odd to me. Mm -hmm. But not enough that I, you know, it kind of stuck out but I just went on like, yeah. oh, he's creepy. Well, the, the house looks dead. Like, I didn't even know a child lived there besides the trampoline. I didn't know there was a kid there until yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I know your grandmother doesn't want to speak, but, you know, she's she's heroic for having done this and yeah. really made a difference in this person's life and, you know, in saving them. Yeah, um, I, I told her that. I said, you're a hero, and she said, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, she She's is. like, I did what I was supposed to. She's yeah. like... That's cool. But she's, she's like that. She's... Yeah. She's like, I didn't, I don't want attention from it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I understand. And my, my only thing, like I wasn't there, but I wanted the story out there and kind of speak for her. And absolutely. And I was hoping if this girl somehow seen it, that she knew that I was thankful. You know, I was thankful that my house sheltered her. Yeah. And we ended up taking a care package today to her Very or nice. to the police department for her That's because I want her to feel loved and yeah, absolutely. know that people care. Cause and that's actually one one thing I, I tell people about this community is, you know, they say it takes a village. And we have a village. There is mothers around this town that they're there when I need mom advice or, you know, something. Yeah. They're there. That's that's my village. They love my kid just like I do. Yeah. My husband grew up in the city and he used to hear growing up people talking bad about Excelsior. Right. And now he tells people. I love this place. He's like, I, I like living here. Yeah, that's great. I heard you say earlier that you were proud to have grown up here yes. and be living here. Yeah, yep. I feel the same way. I never I never wanted to move away and because I knew we had a good town here and there's a lot of people here I love and... Yeah, yeah. We were very fortunate to be in the community that we are. Yes. My goodness, what a case. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I'll be watching this case and all the court proceedings as we saw October 18th and December 2nd are important dates to remember for Timothy Haslett Jr. Um, I'll see, you know, if there's any updates in what they found in the house or what happened in this case. I really hope that the, the victim is okay. They say she's in a stable condition. Of course, they mean physically, oh, mental health, you know, the trauma is going to be terrible to work through. So sending her so much love. If she does ever see this, just know you are most welcome here on Grizzly True Crime. This whole community has your back and we feel for you. I know that there's people in this community that can also relate to her story, which is very sad to think about, but unfortunately true. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and I will see you again soon. Stay safe.